Okay, we've left off halfway through our bank reconciliation problem. Let's pick up with the second half. We've gone through the left-hand side of our bank rec saying, here's what the bank thinks our cash is, but here's what the bank's missing. And it's typically going to be outstanding checks, those checks that haven't been cashed yet or haven't appeared on our bank statement yet, and outstanding deposits or deposit in transit, those the deposits that haven't appeared on our bank statement yet. Now we've got to go the other way. We've got to say, what's on the bank statement? that we've missed in our cash T account. What's on the bank statement that I haven't recorded yet on my books? So the right hand side of this page is all about here's what we think cash is, 5269, and here's why we're wrong. So let's go back to the problem. So we just go the opposite way with the the um uh, the bank side, we just click, went down our cash T account. We said, here's everything the bank's missing. And it was those three items that are circled. And there's the little star item we'll have to worry about now. Uh, on Going the other way, we're just going to have to look at everything on the bank statement that hasn't been accounted for yet in our cash T account. And basically, it's everything I haven't checked off yet. But we can kind of work backwards. I say 5,500, yes, that still matches. 1,450, you can look up and see it still matches. 832, you can see that still matches. NSF check, B. Smith, 750. That's an amount that appears on my bank statement. But as I scroll up, I don't see it anywhere on my cash T account. So I'm going to have to worry about that. The 983 versus 839 issue, I want to deal with at the end because it's so weird and it's tricky. Um, so we'll just save that for the very last thing we do. Continuing to scroll down, everything else is matching until I get to this bank collection 1450. There's an asterisk beside it that says the bank collection on March 23rd was the collection of a note receivable from K. Murphy and represents principal of 1400 and interest of 50 bucks. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we'll deal with that. Uh, in its time. Uh, check 70, check 71, both were fine. And then there's a banking plan fee, basically a service charge of 30 bucks, and we earned five whole dollars of interest. So these are all items that the bank has recorded, the ones that are circled on the bank statement, that we haven't recorded yet in our cash T account. You'll see that these are numbers are nowhere to be found in our cash T account. They're items that are outstanding and you may say to yourself well wait there's 1450 in our cash T account yes and we've caught that deposit so yeah there's two 1450s we've only got one in our cash T account so this item is, is something we missed so let's go ahead and record those on to our bank reconciliation these four missing items and then we'll deal with that weird 983 issue at the last so the first one is the NSF check from B Smith so I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna say NSF check B Smith and that NSF check was for 750 bucks so let's put that in over here 750 dollars now I've got to ask myself with every one of these when I find out about the NSF check or whatever item I'm looking at. Is that good for my money or bad for my money? And the answer is if somebody gives me a check, and remember NSF stands for non-sufficient funds, basically this B. Smith guy gave us a $750 check. He didn't have the money to cover it. The check bounced. This is bad for my money. So I'm going to put it in brackets because it hurts my cash balance. My cash is going down as a result of this guy bouncing a check. My way. Um, oops, I always go the wrong way there. Uh, the next circled item uh, is this bank collection for 1450. Remember what we said about bank collections. The bank can collect money on our behalf, and if the bank collects money on our behalf, that's good for our money. So I'm just going to say bank collection, and it's a plus 1450. I don't need to put it in brackets. That's great news for my money. Next up, banking plan fee, 30 bucks. I'll call that a service charge. It's a $30 service charge. And it's 30 bucks, and of course that is bad news for our money. Uh, the next item oh, on the list is the five dollars of interest. I'm going to call that interest revenue because that's what it is. It's it's interest income. It's it's good news. 
and it's only five dollars of good news but it helps my cash it doesn't hurt my cash it helps so the last item we need to look at before our bank rec is complete we did kind of the easy stuff now the hard one this 983 and 839 I just want to read the issue again and I'll zoom in a bit closer here Oop, not that close sheesh what's going on here uh, let me go to there that's better um, so that check 64 I have it underlined in red there the, the two asterisks item uh, it says a payment on account was incorrectly recorded as 839 on Ned's books in other words our account recorded credit cash 839 the correct amount of the check was recorded by the bank 983 so here's what we did we went credit cash 839 we should have this is what we did we should have gone uh, credit cash what did the bank do 983 so let's figure out the difference here we we messed up what's the difference we went credit cash 839 we should have gone credit cash 983 the difference is a hundred and forty four bucks we're hundred and forty four dollars apart from what we did to what we should have done so my question is how do I fix it I went credit cash 839 I should have gone credit cash 983 I'm hundred and forty four bucks off what's my uh, solution here my solution is well, I either have to debit cash or credit cash to fix it. The answer, I've got, I guess I've got to ask myself is, did I credit cash enough or did I credit cash too much here? We didn't credit cash enough. We didn't credit cash enough. So to solve this problem, I've got to credit my cash 144 bucks more. I'm 144 bucks short in terms of my credits to cash. Now let's go back to our bank rack what this is telling me and this is the bookkeepers error this is the accountants error I'll call it a bookkeepers error we could call it an accountants error our accountant made a mistake they didn't credit cash by hundred and forty four dollars enough in other words to fix it we need cash to go down by hundred and forty four dollars we need to be crediting our cash hundred and forty four dollars I know that was a mouthful I know that's a bit tricky I hope you'll rewind and kind of rewatch and, and get your head around that part okay so now we have a list to add up and I think what you're gonna find is when we add our list we're gonna end up bang on 5800 let me just pull out the calculator tool in Excel here calc hopefully none of my software is embarrassing let me see download Starcraft poker star oh you can see I'm a de degenerate I opened the wrong program to uh, calc there we go. If you just type in calc, you'll get a calculator. So let's add up our list here. 5269 minus 750 plus 1450 minus 30 plus 5 minus 144 equals 5,800. So let me just write that number at the bottom. But right now, birds are singing, sun is shining. I'm feeling very good, very strong, very powerful. And the reason I'm feeling so good, strong, and powerful is these two numbers match. We call this our reconciling balance. And now, as an accountant, you can go, well, yeah, my balances are different, but I'm able to explain them. I understand where my differences come from now you might think all right if this is a balance sheet I would do this and I would call it a day unfortunately it's not a balance sheet we have more work to do my balance right now according to my cash T account is 5269 that's the balance on my cash T account but I've just said here's all the things I missed here's all the things I'm wrong about I've got one two three four five things that I'm my cat my books are off by well the banks off by those outstanding checks and deposits the banks gonna catch up though once the person deposits the check or we deposit our money the banks gonna figure it out and they're gonna get caught up on our side of the books though if we miss a bunch of stuff it's the accountants job to get caught up 
So that's going to be our job. That's going to be our next step. So in the next part of the video, I'm going to walk you through the five journal entries that we require to solve this problem. The five journal entries we require to, to finish this up. Now I have very good news for you. These are the easiest journal entries of introductory accounting. These are the best and easiest journal entries we're going to do all year. So that's going to be in the next part of the video. Please uh, click over to that one.